Hey y'all, it's Alex and welcome back to my channel. Yesterday, if you missed it, was day 10 and I just realized I didn't mark on the edges anywhere that what day it was, so we'll have to go back and do that at some point. But um, that was the Q&A episode, so if you'd like to catch that and learn a little bit more about me, um, that'll be in the top right corner. Um, today's word is snow and in a lovely juxtaposition to the topic snow, we have Ecoline 600, which is just green. Lovely. So with today's prompt being snow, I'm thinking I'm going to have a weather witch casting a cloud for their familiars to play around with. This is the one color I've been kind of dreading because it's going to be interesting to see how exactly we're going to use it for these, these characters. You know, it's a little sad how much tape I go through. I should really, uh, I should really start reusing tape. So since I couldn't exactly talk very much during the filming of yesterday's piece about this, one thing I am going to miss about filming without recording audio is uh, I listen to so many podcasts and so many episodes of things. So now I'm gonna have to catch up on my YouTubes after I finish my Inktober pieces at least for the next couple of days. I think we're gonna start with the placing of the cloud, actually. Why don't we put the cloud about here? Then the witch is gonna be about there-ish. I'm tempted to put a rug beneath them, but I think from our track record with having circular objects at the forefront of, of images for this Inktober has not gone well. So I'm trying to think of how else I wanna place them into this scene with a big old man bun. Can't do a man bun and a hat at the same time. Hmm. Hmm. So I think it's in my Illo sketchbook that I did some thumbnailing for what I thought crows might look like in my style. And unfortunately it's like half covered over by this drawing that I did, but I'm thinking, I'm hoping I can kind of recreate this style. I'm not very good at replicating my own drawings after it's been a hot second. I don't know if that's like, if that's just me. Since they're gonna be a weather witch, I'm gonna put like a partly cloudy symbol on, on the end of their hat. That hand looks funky. We'll, we'll keep it as a placeholder now. It looks more like they're like picking their nose. I'm gonna have to make him kneel a little bit further just to make sure that he fits in the frame. I'm gonna give him a nice big ponytail that's coming out of the back over top of his scarf. His hair is a little bit too floofy, so we're gonna dial it back. So what I'm thinking for the background is we're gonna put them inside of like a garden. Definitely makes better use of the green. So I'm gonna put in a straight line across here that will eventually be like a brick edge to the hedges. And so for his outfit, it's like he has, he has mostly summer clothes on, but to join in the fun of giving his familiars some winter playtime, he's also donned a scarf. Don't know whether or not, I wanna do one big stripe across most of his shirt. I don't know whether or not I want to do any stripes or any sort of pattern on the scarf itself. We'll see. All right, so moving on to the familiars, which uh, I kind of avoided for now, because I'm not sure if I like the poses that I have the familiars at in, in my image. I think I'm gonna do the cat first. I think I'm gonna do one of my, my weird sort of cryptid cats. I can flash a picture of some of the other ones I've drawn up like here-ish because over here we have less more space to just chuck those in. That is the weirdest looking cat I think I've ever drawn and that is actually saying something considering I've drawn a cat Nessie. Hmm. I don't particularly like the pose that I have the cat in in my original sketch. Man, I'm having trouble with these familiars today. Hmm. So maybe instead of being somewhere kind of temperate where they might have snow, maybe these guys live in like the Southwest and they don't ever see snow. 
So what if we put some cactuses around in the background? It's been a while since I've attempted to draw a cactus, so uh, please don't make fun of my cactuses. <laughs> since I don't really want to draw the bird's wing outstretched, maybe this little familiar got himself hurt. And also I just realized I said about three times that I'd plug in my uh, microphone to be able to do better recording for this one hasn't happened yet and since we're this far in I don't think it is going to happen so I'm sorry guys this this video might have a little bit worse audio than yesterday's did. Little stick legs. I'm gonna give him a bigger eye than that. And also a shorter beak. Some little cartoon eyebrows just floating up off of them there. I don't know why the name Carl is really speaking to me for this raven but we're just we're gonna call him Carl. Hmm. That's not how cats work at all. I'd say that's slightly closer to how cats work. I want to draw this cat in a harness, but I forget what cat harnesses typically look like. It. Oh, that is adorable. Oh, it's like a little sailor suit. Fuck. Now I gotta draw a little cat sailor suit. I'm gonna go in and put some more cacti along the background for them. I'm gonna give this one a little bow tie. I'm gonna give names to all of them. I think I'm going to change the hedge into a whole bunch of this type of cactus. I really like this. I almost call them bubbly cactus. I know that's not an actual name for them, but then these are all bricks. And then we've got them sitting on cobblestones or just pavers of some kind. So we're gonna have like the quintessential, I always call them mitten shaped ca cactuses cause you figure they, they kind of like spread off like this. There's actual names for cactuses, but I am, from Ohio, and uh, my experience with cactuses is limited at best. So my experience with cactuses is almost stepping on one in Utah. That that's uh, about it. I have had uh, one succulent. I know I mentioned Gertrude in uh, that would have been day eight because I named the witch lady Gertrude after my my beautiful succulent that my girlfriend got me for Valentine's Day. Um, she unfortunately is no longer with us. I mean, the, the cactus you guys heard from my girlfriend yesterday. So I think I'm only going to really define like the very front row and then I'm just gonna do kind of a lazy texturing through the background just to make it look like there's more cactuses than there probably should be. I wanna have some bigger ones up here around these guys. I think I'm actually going to erase some of them that I have and make bigger ones just to kind of make sense of how big they are in the background. So I think I'm going to stop with the background for a minute here and go in and do the line art of the main people just so that way I can keep track of how exactly, um, well, yes, I'm going to ink in these main characters before I continue with the background just to make sure I can keep a good level of detail on these guys as compared to the background. You know, sometimes the the line art or the sketching process is really more of a guideline than a rule. AKA sometimes I make a plan and I just don't stick to it. You know, it looks like we're doing part of day 19 a little early, early, huh? Hmm. So since we have a good two familiars here, I've got to say, if I had to pick any animal to be my familiar, I'd probably pick a crow or a pigeon. And my sister is probably laughing about that. Just a, a fun random story. Um, when I was younger, my family went on a trip to Italy and on our trip to our stop at Venice, there were these vendors who were selling little bags of corn feed and you could throw them to the pigeons all across the main square and i i wasted probably about a good mm, 10 euros on just feeding the pigeons i like put them on top of my head held them on my shoulder like a pirate and for the um uh, for the rest of that trip my nickname was pidge because of the the pigeons so, 
I kind of wish that pigeons were a little bit more loved as a familiar, so I might actually switch to a pigeon instead of a crow. And then again, I might also have to go for an owl because one of my nicknames through high school was Owlix because the name almost rhymes. Huh. So we've kind of ironed out that my familiar would probably be some kind of bird. If you guys could pick, what would your familiar be? I can hear my sister shouting that she would be a tree. I, I can hear it from here. I know I've, I've said this a few times already during this episode, but man, I miss listening to podcasts. I don't know if I'm putting these buttons on the right side of the shirt for it to be a guy's shirt, but uh, we're not gonna focus on that too much. <laughs> Honestly, for these uh, cacti that I'm gonna be adding in, I think I'm just gonna kind of make them up as I go along. I want these to kind of have like heart-shaped needles on them, kind of like how I did them here, but like actually heart-shaped. And I'm gonna do all of the needles with white gel pens. So we have Joffrey, Susan, Dimitri. Mm. So this is uh, also another kind of random thought that I've had. This might be something that you guys would be able to tell me more whether or not you want this kind of video later once I release another video, but would you guys be interested in me releasing some videos about kind of like a more realism kind of drawing? I know that I do a whole bunch of this cartoony style, but I learned a little bit of realism in an art class that I was I'm going to share a tour of my art with you guys about soon. One of the projects that we had to do for that class was we had to go out somewhere in the world and find a plant, or at least somewhere with a whole bunch of foliage, and do contour and blind contour drawings. Now, I absolutely hated doing these when I was actually doing them for the class. However, I've been feeling like I'm a little bit too stagnant in my current art, so I'm thinking of picking that back up just so that way I have at least some things to break up the monotony, you know? So would you guys be interested in like going out in the world on like a field trip to somewhere and just kind of like sitting down with me and watching me do like different styles of art than the cartoony stuff. I feel like I don't have enough succulents or, uh, out and about, so I'm gonna add in some more in the background here. All right, so every succulent has a name. So we have Mitchell and Mitchell too, because I always call them Mit Cacti. Gertrude, who is the one that's tipped over because uh, she's uh, gone. Goldie A, which is named after Andrew Hickold. I think that's the name of the guy who did the Spooky Scary Skeletons song. And then the aloe veras are supposed to be the vera E big bunch of friends. Then there's Dimitri, Susan, and Joffrey. And then Carl. We still need a name for the cat and the boy. I'm looking up at my wall of postcards, which... And the two names that are really sticking out to me most are George, because capital Gorge, and Bryce. Those are uh, pretty average. I mean, there's also... Hmm. Trying to look for good inspiration. Hmm. 
His name's gonna be Brian. So we have Carl, Brian, and we need something kind of normal for the cat. <laughs> Gilgamesh. Let's let's just go with Gilgamesh. Yeah, I told myself that I'd start doing less complicated pieces. Boy, was I wrong or what? That owl looks significantly worse than than when I tried to do that same type of owl on the uh, piece for day four. Woohoo! This piece got away from me. <laughs> That's the thumbnail. That's what it became. My girlfriend just came in to check on me and also let me see the cat for like the few minutes that I'm not, I had to let the ink settle in and uh, she couldn't guess immediately what the uh, prompt was. I have such a hard time actually starting the coloring of pieces. I just, there's so many options and I don't know where it would be best to start. So let's go in with this lightest wash. Since I'm going to be going in with a very dark color for the hair, I'm not really worrying too much about the edge lines here. I'm assuming we have direct sunlight from above giving us shadows. And we'll have to go in with another darker color on him as well, at least for the shadowing. Let's go in with the number two. Gonna go in with a darker color to give. All right. I think we're gonna use this color for the main color of their pants as well. And we're gonna go into the underside of their hat with, I think we're gonna do green underneath of here. So it's like a black hat on the top, but it's got green lining underneath. I think we're going to leave the cat white and you know what maybe we'll do they're both albino so that way we can do a really dark color for all of the background and then we can do white companions i think we're actually going to go in with black for the dirt in between all of the stones so that way it's like the darkest it can be wonder if it would be best. Um, I'm also going to go in and do the sky real quick. I'm going to do it with this uh, same color that I used for Brian's shorts. So shading has been added in. We're going to snap through all of the grouting because this is already going to be a very long video. I can feel it in my bones. I have a desk buddy. Hope Jess doesn't mind. God, this color almost makes me wish that today's prompt were like toxic. This one doesn't darken up as you layer it very much. Then again, that's kind of to be expected with watercolors. I think I'm gonna actually do all of their shading in a watered down green tone. So succulents aren't my favorite plants, but I do like the juxtaposition of the warm, sunny area and the warm, the warmth needing plants with the prompt snow. I do like having these strong juxtapositions. Thank <laughs> you. 
I am a little sad that the texture doesn't seem to have stayed very visible on the, the aloe vera. You know, I think I'm actually going to darken up the hair a little bit more too. Just kind of haphazardly add some shading in here just to give a little bit of texture. It may look a little slapdash by the time I'm done. However, it'll be better than leaving it flat, I think. All right, so I'm not going to put any on the ones back here, and I'm just going to do some dots across the ones of similar type to those back there. All right, I think that finally concludes this piece. Alright you guys, I hope you enjoyed the making of this piece, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Tomorrow's word is dragon, and once again we have a metallic fine tech, so I hope you are very excited for that because God knows I am. If you'd feel so inclined, hit that subscribe button and check me out on my other social media handles. Thanks, and I'll see you all tomorrow.